Tuesday the 17th of January 2017. Well, let's see what stupid people we have in the paper this morning. In today's Super Sore Away Daily Mail, locals rage. Locals rage at obnoxious playtime noise from school that could soon have little Prince George as a pupil. Oh, bless his little heart. Neighbours also, look, look, look at this, it's the exclusive prep school which could soon be entrusted, boys and girls, to helping mould Prince George into a future king. God save our gracious king, long live our noble king, God save the king. I wonder... <coughs> I wonder if Buckingham Palace at that point would consider having me sing the song. You know, like they do at the White House when ba the great Barry Manilow, who is pictured in several places on our wall behind us here, one, three Barry Manilow things now, is gradually taken over. Soon, this will be like Anne Chaplin's house. Anne Taplin, who is a regular viewer and correspondent to this actual program, has a Barry Manilow grotto at her house. Pictures and things everywhere, dear. Is it, I wonder if it's like a little, um, like a religious grotto where she actually goes down on her knees. Um, sorry, she actually goes down on her knees in front of little statues of the great Barry Manilow. I wonder if it's like that. Well, anyway, which, now and again, they invite him to the White House to do this. I think it's the, um, the Thanksgiving Day and he comes and sings. Perhaps that could be me outside the... Buckingham Palace, or in American, Buckingham Palace, it could be me doing that, you know, as as the new King George is inaugurated on the throne. I like the sound of that, eh? Or maybe at Westminster Abbey, somewhere like that. Anyway, it goes on. Weatherby School, uh, according to its neighbours, produces an, and I quote, obnoxious cacophony of screaming children. Oh, for Lord's sake. The top pre-prep in Notting Hill, West London. Oh, they're so bloody important, these neighbours, aren't they? Oh, we're all so important. We live in Notting Hill. Anyway, they count Prince William and Prince Harry among its poor former pupils, along with Andrew Lloyd Webber, Julian Fellows, Hugh Grant and Romeo Beckham. Princess Diana was often photographed, dropping off William and Harry at the school's bright red door. Now Prince George, three, has been tipped to enrol there too, if William and his wife, the Duchess of Cambridge, move back to London. However, wealthy, re <laughs> wealthy residents, and remember a lot of wealthy people think they're very, very important, just because they got a bit of cash. And, oh, we're very, very important. We've got £10 million in the bank. We're very, very important. No, you're not. You're not. You're just a bit richer than the rest of us, but you're not that important. We're not interested, dear. Wealthy residents close to the school have branded its new blue playground as an eyesore and a noise nuisance. The school installed it without planning consent last August and now is now applying for retrospective permission. That's a great word, isn't it? Re I like that word. Retrospective. <laughs> oh dear. They added, on top of the screaming children and the additional noise of whistleblowing and shouting instructions, the area is now used for netball. Basketball. Oh, that's what it is. Netball. They don't like the netball. Do they? I bet the husband's appearing out the window. That's what it is. <laughs> On top of the screaming, the netball, basketball, and other, uh, get this word, get this word, and other exuberant ball games, <laughs> which thought through the screams and interactions of a team substantially increased their noise even further. Well, why did you move next to a school then, you stupid people? See, full of stupid people. And besides, they're children. Their children, if you really don't, if you really want to experience living next to a bad school, go next to one of the inner city schools. You'll have your windows regularly broken as the little gits walk past you then. You should think yourself so lucky. It's just a little bit of noise from some children. 
I've got a school actually very close to me. I can hear the noise about half past ten in the morning. And do you know what that noise is? Little screams and shouts of joy and happiness, boys and girls, as they are in the playground, kicking the ball around and occasionally bullying another, bullying another young child in a corner by kicking their heads in. That's what children do. I listen carefully to hear if I can hear any of the old, uh, any of the old now super super offensive names that are being called. Uh, Bucktooth, which was my nickname, because I had teeth like that. Bucktooth, fatty, four eyes. I'm sure the children have got many many of their own new names now that we never had when we were children. I feel left out. I feel left out. That's what children do. They make noise. Now stop moaning. Or if you've got all that money, how about installing triple or quadruple glazing? That'll sort it out. Stop moaning and spend some of the money. Miserable old people, honestly. Why is it with people? They do annoy me, dear. They do annoy me. Very busy last night at the karaoke. A wonderful Monday night. Oh. Where's that come from? Oh, so I see what that is. They're advertising Disneyland, but oh, shut up! So there's an advert for Disneyland just gone off at Euro Disney. You remember we went to Euro Disney back in November, and we had a lovely time. But my advice is go to America. It's horrendously spe expensive in Euro Disney. Not just a bit. Is there a little bit of a whistling coming across? Let me turn it down there. There we go. Uh, it's horrendously expensive in Euro Disney, uh, and I would save up and go to America if I were you. All right. <sighs> Just having a sniff. So very busy last night. Uh, I, I notice I'm getting... Oh, I haven't got my thing plugged in, have I? That's bloody Ronnie's fault, that is. Just a minute, let me plug my microphone in. I just noticed that. Otherwise, you won't get the music at the end. Oh, I can't do it now. There we are. So are we sounding a little bit echoey? That's Ronnie's bloody fault earlier, because he rung me just before I started recording. So I had to pull the thing out, otherwise I couldn't hear it. Did it sound a little bit echoey? A bit unprofessional, then? I'm sorry. We are now we are now coming to you in full professional stereo sound, for those of you with suitable decoders. However, no subtitles on page 888 of CFAX. Thank you. Now, busy last night. Now, I've noticed I've been leaving a little bit earlier, about 4.45. Now, this avoids... All the traffic coming out of Bracknell. And, of course, the traffic that should be... is usually on the motorway by the time I... I don't get any of that at the moment. So I have asked if we can actually start an hour earlier. Now, they may say no. If it doesn't fit in with the venue, then they may say no. But there are people... Uh, Ray Reynolds of, is is one of them, actually, uh, who would love us to start a bit earlier, sort of a 7 o'clock instead of 8 o'clock. We'll still go on till our past 11, but to start an hour earlier makes all the difference with the traffic coming into London. I mean, it really does. You know, I, I left at quarter to five. Well, I was there at our past six, 25 past six. And then I hung around for an hour and a half before it was due to start. Now, the thing is, you can't, I can't get there. This is at the um, central station in King's Cross. I can't get there earlier than half past six because you can't park on the yellow lines until after half past six. So at 25 past six, I literally, it's so, so stupid, really. I literally had to stop just down the road and put my indicator on. Otherwise, people would have thought I would parked and I'd get a ticket. Probably no one would even appear to give me a ticket. It would just come off one of those cameras. You know, a camera, a photograph would be taken. Now, if I've got my indicator on, it tells them that I'm not actually parked, you see. So I waited there, and then at 6.30, I moved <coughs> further up the road uh, and did my parking there. So if I could start an hour earlier, um, it would make all the difference. So a possibility, only a possibility of a 7 p.m. start. What they might do is, I, my guess is they'll try it, and we'll see if it works first. Start at 7 instead of 8. So I'll let you know how that goes, all right? Uh, lots of new songs being sung by people last night, which is fantastic. Lovely to see our good friend Steve M there. He does a lot of, lot of uh, Stevie M, he does a lot of the old... Um, uh, rock and roll stuff. Maureen, oh, the little sandwiches. Ma she wraps them up very well. In fact, Maureen is about to become a viewer of this programme. Hooray! Now, Maureen doesn't have a computer or a smartphone, but she's got uh, on the back of her telly, I think it is. Um, I think that's how she watches, actually. I'm not sure. 
or does she actually have a computer and she plugs it into the I'm not sure. Anyway, um she she plugs the a USB stick in uh for the karaoke, I think someone she knows, possibly her daughter, uh, has the shows put onto a UB sits, the U USB stick, the karaoke shows. And she plugs it into her computer and watches on them there. Well, she hasn't seen one of these shows yet. So at the weekend, I put one of my shows on a USB stick, you see, and I gave that to her last night. So I can't wait to see what she thinks about me talking rubbish for 20 minutes, half an hour each day. So we'll see how that goes. Welcome along, Maureen, to the show. All right. Uh, I did do, uh, myself and Ray Reynolds did a little video last night of a song uh, with flags and all that sort of thing, which I intended to show you today. But unfortunately, um, uh, Ray's microphone was so loud that it distorted the sound into the phone. So I'm afraid I can't show you that, and we'll have another go at that another time, OK? It's usually I'm, I'm standing by the control desk, you see, and if I see the red light coming on, um, because what you see what happens, I'll, I'll give you a demonstration, you see, if I speak really loud, you'll either get uh, a distortion, you see, and that's how it came out, and it, it sounds all right, it hurts. It hurts, so I'll have to redo that again and make sure I've not got it up too loud. If a little red light starts flashing and I can't see it, then I don't, I can't do anything about it. You see what I mean? So I'll start it off lower next time, and that'll, that'll work better. Um, did you see a program? I think it was on ITV the other night called "What Is Your Pound Worth?" And it was saying, because we just mentioned Disney then, didn't we? It was saying about uh, holidays abroad and that now costing anything up to 20% dearer than what they did uh, due, in a year. <clears throat> That's just in a year because of the weak pound. Now, it's not bad for everyone. If we've got exports and things like that. It's really good for that, OK? But if we were going on foreign holidays, not everywhere, not everywhere, but certainly to a lot of Europe and South Africa, places like that, America as well especially, that you are going to find it a lot more expensive. Not only the holiday, but of course, when you're there buying stuff. Perhaps you like to go shopping when you're abroad or even just eating out meals, uh, buying drink if you if you drink. Everything is uh, that little bit more dearer. So, of course, the bloke on the telly says, well, what, what will you do? You either find a bit of a cheaper holiday abroad or or you spend less money. My argument there is, why go abroad and stay here? We've got some wonderful holidays. Don't write off the UK as a holiday destination. Just because you live here doesn't mean you've seen anything. I've seen nothing of the UK. A little bit here, a little bit there. There's so much. To... You could spend your entire life, I think, going around the UK to different places. There's fantastic places. The Lake District. Oh, beautiful. And don't think you just walk. Oh, I don't want to go walking. Well, you, go, you can go canoeing. You go canoeing. Driving those little go-kart things in, in different places. The Highlands of Scotland, beautiful. But equally as beautiful, uh, wows, the Brecon Beacons. There's so much to see in the UK and so many different ways to do it. You can go in a really posh hotel or you can go in a tent and anything in between. You know what I like doing now? Caravan holidays, static caravan holidays. And my God, there's hundreds of these uh, static caravan places all over the country. You go away for a week. Don't forget you're not buying per person. What you would do, what you do is rent out the caravan. Anything from between £200 a week uh, up to, it would be much dearer in the school holidays. That's the same for everything, though. You know that. Caravan holidays all over the country. No need to go abroad. Don't worry about the weather. So what if it rains? So what? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just take yourself a nice jacket and you can have just a nicer time here. You really can. Without all that worry of sitting on that bloody plane. Go, can you all sit down? Do your seatbelt, sir. Sitting in that airport. You haven't got to do any of that. You just get in your car. You drive for two, three, four hours. Whatever you decide to do. However far it is away from you. And that's it. The Isle of Wight. Isle of Wight. I should be going there hopefully this year at some point. The Isle of Wight. Lovely place. Lots to do for the children and everything. OK, so don't worry about going abroad. Besides, they don't even speak English, most of them. Oh, for God's sake. Have you tried to buy a bar of galaxy in Italy? They haven't got a clue what you're going on for, do you? 
Oh, my word. Have you tried to buy a Mars bar in Greece? Well, what do you say? Mars, ke, Mars, ke, ke, Mars, Mars, Mars. Blimey, stay here. So much better. And besides, we do the best chips. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> now, talking of food, is your sushi... We keep going on about this sushi. I'm determined to get you off this sushi. Nasty stuff. Little bits of rolled up, uncooked fish full of bits of plastic, dear. Full of micro beads. Is your sushi lunch as fattening as a Big Mac? Not to mention packed with salt, sugar, toxic micro beads and even parasites. Parasite. I actually quite like that word. Parasites. Little worms that you eat with your raw fish that get into your body and start munching away at your intestines. <laughs> yes, very dangerous. Sushi is fast taking over from the humble sandwich as the nation's most popular grab-and-go food. Uh, it's oh-so-healthy reputation as low-calorie and vitamin-rich has fueled a UK market for the Japanese delicacy worth 69 Million pounds a year. Well, I'd tell you what, I'd give you 69 million pounds. I would to never, ever give me any sushi. No, I won't try it. Don't give me that old. Um, if you try it, you might like it. No, I won't. Disgusting stuff. But now its halo has slipped. The halo has slipped after an investigation found some servings contain more calories than a Big Mac. ha, <laughs> ha. Or are as carbohydrate heavy as seven and a half slices of mm, white bread. I wonder if it's tiger bread. I like tiger bread. Experts have also warned that sushi may contain parasites, bacteria, harmful microbeads, and a love for it could wipe out several species of fish. So do be careful, dear. Do be very careful with that. Oh, dear. Some says some versions aren't as healthy. UK portions are about 20% bigger, you fat people. They're always got to be 20% bigger. But mind you, I must say, you know those large packets of cheese and onion crisps? Only one pound for all that pleasure in a bag. And unlike a partner, they don't row with you, do they? If you don't finish the bag, they don't suddenly jump out of the packet and say, why haven't you eaten us? Like a miserable old partner, get rid of your partners. Be alone. It's much happier. Um, <clears throat> we Brits also douse our sushi in far more salty soy sauce than the Japanese do. Well, there, there's the aunt. There, there you are, you see. It's so tasteless and disgusting that we've got to stick a load of soy sauce on it. Oh, no, you don't want it. You really don't want it. But more importantly, here's, here's the important. There's lots, lots on this story. Here's the most important one to me. Raw fish may look mouthwatering. <laughs> sure? Do you think so? Not to me, it don't. Uh, but it can have toxic hidden ingredients, including parasites and bacteria. It can contain 20 millimetres, 20 millimetre anisakis worms, which... Are you ready for this? Listen carefully. Which, when eaten, can invade the human body, attaching to the wall of the orostophagus. That's that pipe that goes down with your food. Stomach or intestine and causing vomiting, bleh, diarrhea, <laughs> and agonising stomach pains. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, oh, ah, oh, either that or you've eaten too much. So be very, very careful eating all this sushi stuff. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Some messages on the, yesterday's show. Simon, we were talking about talent shows yesterday. Simon says, what does my nut about X Factor and these shows is the contestants that do not get put through and then start crying, my world has come from an end. This is all I wanted to do. Oh, oh, please put me through. Oh, please, please, Sharon, please put me through. Please, I love it when they're begging like that. I love it, dear. They start crying and moaning. It's my world. It's all I ever wanted. What will I do now? Get a bloody job in a sushi restaurant. <laughs> Get a job like everyone else, dear. 
They say they deserve it. I deserve a sexy supermodel, but it ain't gonna happen, and I do not cry about it. Oh, I bet you do, Simon. I bet you do. I bet you sit there. I bet you sit there in your bedroom crying, because there's no one there, don't you, my love? Crying. Just get someone from the back of the newspaper to come round if you're desperate. It's only about 50 quid, so I've heard. So I've heard. I want to be a millionaire TV star. Not going to happen. So I get on with life, same as everyone else. Those people are idiots. Get a job. I know what you mean. You want to be a millionaire TV star. Look, there's not many people who are millionaire TV stars. I'm, I'm TV stars. I mean, obviously, I am, you know. But then, I'm, you know, that that's how it is, I'm afraid, Simon. You know, Simon, you, McDonald's, me, television personality. That's just how it is in life. And we, look, we all get on together, don't we? It's just one of those things. It's just one of those things. So you, McDonald's, me, television personality and huge superstar. Not megastar. There's a megastar. Megastar, Barry Manilow, superstar, Chris Reardon, McDonald's worker, Simon. There's nothing wrong with McDonald's. One of my friends, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this, has just got a job in McDonald's. Well done. <laughs> Joking aside, a lot of uh, young people come up to me in, uh, while I'm working in it. Oh, Chris, I've got a new job. And, and they're like, oh, I, I, I'm a bit embarrassed to say what it is. Well, what is it then? They say, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, it's not. What's wrong with that? It's a job. Never let anyone put you down, Simon. Never, ever let anyone put you down. And so what if you're sitting there in that bedroom, lonely, you know, wanting someone to be there, you know, a top model. Perhaps I could send around Katie Price. Do you fancy someone like that, lovey? Katie Price? I mean, she goes with anyone. I mean, <laughs> you might be lucky with that one, dear. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Uh, Joanna says, oh, dear, you are a piece of talent. Oh, thank you, Joanne. I think so as well, lovey. I think so as well, Joanna. Have you got the star yet, the Christmas star? Uh, hello to Sandra Blanchard, who says, hi, Chris, loved your show. That's Wendy's mum. Hi, Wendy's mum. Thanks for the well wishes. Many blessings. Oh, blessings. I feel blessed. I am feeling blessed today. Thank you, Sandra. Danny Davis has important information about his nan. She does not carry mints in her handbag. What, I don't think she can be a proper nan then, Danny. No, all nans need to carry mints in handbags. Joanna says, my nans are gone, but they always had mints in their bags. You need to have a word with your nana. Danny? <laughs> she needs mints in her handbags and chocolate creams. They always had, my nan always had chocolate, Nanny Hayes. She always had a bar of fries, uh, chocolate cream in her, um, in her bag there. All right. Today's birthdays, gang. Happy birthday today to Stella Andrews. Happy birthday to Jamie Quaylo. And happy birthday to, I think it's Johan Niswant. I hope I've got that right. Happy birthday to you all, gang. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Stella, Jamie and Johan, happy birthday to you, just three birthdays today, have a wonderful day boys and girls, uh, and indeed thank you for watching and listening, sorry about the sound at the beginning of the show, it was a, a little bit, a little bit under, under the normal performance that you would be, expect from this world-rated television programme. Have a nice Tuesday. Cheerio now.